Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here. This is the Astrological Winds Channel. And I'm going to take a look at not only the um, Astrological Weather Report for the week of October 31st through November 6th, but also for the month of November. And it's interesting because there's not a lot of activity either this week or in the month, but there's like um, an energy of having reached an apex point with a lot of things. And I think it's going to be a time of really assessing new reality and how we begin to handle that. So I'm going to start with the week, actually, because, um, um, like I said, there's not a lot going on in the month either. And there's and this week. Um, there's no no major event for the month. Um, so this week, um, the main thing about this week is going to be, once again, relationships. And if you remember a couple weekends ago, the Sun and Venus, both, as I said that week, two, two blogs ago, about how they walked down the aisle that week together and they hit a lot of the other planets in a, in transits. And then all of a sudden they went into Scorpio together. And from there, now they, they've still been traveling together, but there's a little bit of separation starting to occur. But there's been an unfolding story, is my point. More likely than not, in many of your relationships with other people. And it's it's going through a time of changing. And this week, Venus is going to actually trigger the Uranus-Saturn square next weekend. So it's going to really be a week of, once again, relationships being under the astrology microscope or the main thing, so to speak, in the weather pattern of this week. Um, and of course, you know, being that it's in Scorpio season and on the, um, on the second half of the Zodiac, it's, you know, that is the, the times of the year that we're really focused more on relationships and we learn more about ourselves through relationships. So, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with Venus this week again. And then what it starts really is on Wednesday, there's an exact Venus, Chiron, Quincunx, and then Venus is also conjuncting the south node that day. And basically what that's saying is that relationships need adjustments that, you know, and that, you know, especially established ones, you know, that they need some kind of adjustment at this point. Um, and it may not be an easy thing to do. It, it, it can be difficult in the sense that, you know, relationships inherently mean that there's two or more people involved in the process. So you don't get to completely pull the strings of the way things are going to work out. Um, so that's where the difficulty can come in because even if you are like a willing party to changing and adjusting relationships. If the other part of the party is, if the other part of the relationship, the other person in the party is not, then it's still difficult to do this then because you can't, you know, that you can change your attitude towards it, but you really can't make the other person change. So if they are like entrenched in a disagreeable position, it, it can, you know, be very difficult to make the changes that you want to do. Um, you know, and then, you know, the conjunction to the South Node also is showing that once again, it's past relationships that have reached um, a point in the present where they've become kind of disagreeable or disharmonious in certain ways and that they, you know, need to, um, you know, that, that adaptability is very tough to come by right now. So that's going to lead, you know, right on into the weekend 
when Venus opposes Uranus on Saturday and then squares Saturn on Sunday. So it's hitting the Uranus-Saturn square, which is starting to slowly separate again now, um, but it's still pretty tight. It's still about two degrees. So, so <clears throat> Uranus opposite uh, Venus opposite Uranus is going to, once again, that very same energy I was just talking about. It's people who we are close with, partnership type energy, where you feel like a lot of change needs to occur. And, and, and it doesn't have to be a disagreeable thing. You know, the point of any Uranus, Venus aspect is to bring creative change into relationships. And that can be very exciting and stimulating. <clears throat> but if you're stuck on the old patterns, it can be upsetting and annoying. And, and here, you know, it's almost like it's leading into a few days, which I'll talk about a little bit in the monthly too, of where there's so much change that's been going on that, you know, even if we've been resisting it on the other side, in the, we're, it's still happening. So we're going <clears> to <throat> look through the other side at, on the end of this and kind of assess, like, what's worthy. And that's what's going to fall here in the relationship part. Um, I think the biggest danger, really, of the... Um, Venus Uranus is this desire for like something new and exciting and stimulating in relationships and if that's not happening in an old relationship and people can you know get indiscreet really they can seek that out in others and what that can do is damage that past or current relationship even more because it's kind of like impulsive actions with others in in the desire to actually make changes in those relationships that are current that are not happening then you, then you you know go and project and find other people to fill that in for you so that's <coughs> where that energy can become very troublesome and people can like do things that damage their close relationships under a Venus here in this opposition. Um, for new relationships, it can be really fun and exciting. Um, it's bringing two people together, usually very different kind of people, um, and it can be very exciting. It's magnetic. Um, it brings a lot of stimulation. A lot of times it's pretty much like a short-term kind of thing many times, it's, um, but also very like um, stimulating and creative and bring some kind of like breaking of the energy of your life but you know relationships are like they 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 are um, they come very quickly you know we can fall into them very quickly but in but in existing relationships there can be this a lot of tension and and stress and stuff that's come to the top of them and you know feeling like they're needing reformation and and when when we talk about venus too once again have to remember that that also can mean money too that like money once again may come or go very quickly during this period and that um and it also stimulates our creative side to different things, to do some things that are out of the ordinary or to be attracted to creative or artistic output or input that is different for us. And once again, brings some kind of excitement or stimulation. But then we go, you know, this is a T-square. So then we also have the Saturn part <clears throat> hit exact on Sunday. And I think really what it's going to do is, like I said, it's it's almost like having to take a look at where is everything at after these two or three weeks of intense energy in relationships, especially with people that you have relationships already established with. Like, there's been a lot of change that's likely gone on in them, 
And it's almost like taking a step back within ourselves and, and making like a sober assessment and, and being real with ourselves about the state of each of these relationships. So like, you know, we can't, you know, be surprised anymore. Um, I think on a, like a, a little bit of a higher level too, one of the big lessons in this is this realization that no matter how close we are to other people, we're still alone inside. You know, like there ne there's never going to be like this complete, like, you know, merging with other people, even the people that we're closest with. And at times, you know, tension and upsetting things and having to make hard decisions and make adjustments and go through changes is required. And it makes us realize that, like, you know, we're still on this, each of our own ship or island, ultimately. We, you know, we pass each other and connect at times or are able to bridge <clears throat> the gap between each other. But this, you know, is an aspect and an experience at times that, you know, with the Venus, Uranus, Saturn all together that helps us realize that. And, and it's, a, it's a strong lesson, you know. Um, but um, once again, you know, it really is like reassessing, contemplating and deciding, you know, if, are, am I willing to go through the changes that are required in this relationship and then, you know, start to build again from there. So a very interesting one. And then the Sun and Mercury are getting, remember I said, that, you know, Venus is now getting a little bit ahead of the Sun. And Mercury is catching up to the sun. Mercury is starting to speed up. So the sun and Mercury are getting really close together. And on the weekend, at the same time that the uh, Venus square Saturn and Uranus is going on, um, Mercury and the sun will quincunx um, Chiron and conjunct the south node. And, and that really shows, you know, to me, what that's saying is that in order to make any changes or adapt to anything in our lives, the first thing we have to do is adjust our attitudes. And, 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 you know, and that just requires some kind of like discipline, but like the changes we have to let go of with the south node there too, is these old thought patterns and stuff you know, that, that have us blocked, you know, whether we realize it or not. So really it's like <clears throat> when the sun and Mercury are both quincunx and Chiron, it's like, you know, we want to make some adap adaptations. We want to bring in some change in our lives and, and change the course of it. But it really is saying, Hey, first your attitude has to change in order for you to do that. So that's like a mental discipline exercise basically to do that and and that leads right into november um there's only four things i want to mention for the whole month of november and the reality is only two of them really are super big things um and that is right at the beginning of next week and i will talk much more extensively next week in the blog next week about this one we are getting our second eclipse of the eclipse season of our second eclipse season of this year and that one is a full lunar eclipse that is um the new moon in scorpio and it is going to be conjunct uranus what we i was just talking about in the north node and it's going to be not only opposite the sun and south node but it's also going to be opposite mercury and venus they're all conjunct together at this point and they are going to be forming a t-square with saturn and i honestly feel this is the final apex event of the last two years of the long-term saturn uranus square that has been destabilizing structures across society and within individual lives so that new change can come in. So I honestly, honestly feel this will be a big triggering event, especially, you know, with Mars retrograde right now and, and everything else that's kind of going on um, politically and in the world. I think there's going to, what's going to happen in this event, there may be some very extreme events that occur during this period, a couple of weeks or so of 
early November. But I think what's really going to happen is we're all going to realize how much the world has changed in the last few years and realize also that it's not going to go back to where it was or anything like that and basically pick through the pieces of all this, you know, rapid change and destabilization of structure and reality, both in our lives and, and, and in society, and see where we can go from there. Like, literally, like, you know, being realistic, it's a new moon, and like saying, like, okay, we have to start, you know, so like old thought patterns, old ways of communicating, old ways of doing relationships old ways of being all those things are stuck together with the south node and scorpio and those are the things that both uranus opposing them and the sun <clears throat> the north node are saying if you want to move forward these are the things that need to be let go of and changed and then saturn's up there at the top of the t-square in aquarius in that higher octave and saying, yes, once you do that, we can take on the challenge of building new forms into the structures that we have and changing things, both in our personal lives, once again, and in society. So, you know, basically what this new moon is gonna show us too, that no matter how much we personally want to, you know, emotionally hold on to the way things are. It's just not happening. You know, we have to accept the, that things have changed and find new solutions, you know, new ideas, new people, you know, new ways of doing things, you know, new information in order to, like, stimulate that creative change that, Uranus really wants to bring in, you know, so it's going to be, I'm going to get into this eclipse in a lot more detail in next week's blog since it's happening next Monday. The three other things I wanted to mention this week, it's interesting, um, or, or for this month, I'm sorry, for the month of November, it's interesting, um, both Uranus and Neptune stimulate the asteroid series, which once again, I've said this before, <clears throat> what I've noticed with Ceres is, you know, it, it is um, all about our resources and, and the security we get from that. It's a mothering, nurturing energy. And what's interesting, um, right after the eclipse, Uranus trines Ceres. So it's saying, you know, there's new approaches that we can come up with right now to dealing with resources and security and taking care of our families and homes even on a personal level if you know we you know there if if we're willing to accept the changes that are going on and we can find new approaches to that and and on a societal level it's it's definitely going to be a lot about like um you know human rights for having what we need like mothers, children, families, people having their needs met, like coming up <clears throat> with new innovative ideas to do that. But what's what's confusing is two weeks later, it op, it's your series is opposite Neptune, which shows once again that a lot of people are struggling to meet those needs right now, and that like. It pushes people to escape, you know, to use substances or things or ways of just trying to escape reality and also falling into patterns of victimhood and martyrhood, you know. Um, so I think really what we need to do is come up with new ideals for um, the way we look at, you know, things that support us and... and um, 
the needs that we have for resources and things like that. That's what it's really doing. But it's an interesting mix between the two of them. Uranus hitting it positively and Neptune not so much, really. Um, and then the one other thing, the other big thing of the month besides the, um, the eclipse is Jupiter will be going direct. So another planet, <clears throat> once again, breaking out of the retrograde phases. So it'll get be, we'll be getting less and less and probably towards the beginning of next year, we'll probably have everything direct again. Um, but Jupiter on November 23rd going direct means that our plans of expansion can now move forward again, plans of growth. So I almost once again, following the storyline of like, if the first couple weeks or so of November is really reassessing how much reality has changed in the last couple of years and, and, and for us individually and in society, and then getting a better grip on that, with Jupiter going direct, we'd say, okay, now I know what I want to do out in that world that I, you know, out in the social world, I, you know, what plans I have, what things I want to do to bring in growth into my life on all kinds of levels, you know, material, spiritual, emotional, uh, mental, you know, and, and intellectual. I mean, Jupiter is definitely like wants to bring in more. And this is like what helps us grow individually. And, um, you know, it <clears throat> brings greater understanding of others, uh, therefore more tolerance of others. So, so that's a, that's really good that uh, Jupiter will be direct for the next eight months about, you know, at, starting on November 23rd. So we can really go start working into that, you know, more external world of pushing those plans that we have to try to bring growth and expansion into our lives. All right, that'll about do it for this week and the month of November. Um, this is the Astrological Winds channel. It's a free service. Um, put a lot of work into it every week. Uh, really like to share um, these ideas or thoughts and of the energy that's going on with anyone who's interested. I know that for some of you who don't know astrology or understand astrology at all, that sometimes it's hard to follow and I'm working on ways to change that, um, for, for, um, future other options. I still like to mention the astrology in this, but remember, you know, you're just listening to what the interpretation of the energy is for the week or the month. That's what's really important. Don't get caught up on my term terminology. If you don't understand astrology, um, and I, I would understand your frustration if you don't, but if you can just key in, I'm, and that's most of what I'm talking about. I only mention very quickly what the astrology is. And most of what I'm saying is the interpretation of it. So it's you know just a little bit of a discipline for your own mind here to be able to key in on that. Um, but this is a free service. And if you get something out of it, I'd really, really appreciate it if you could repay me by sending it on to somebody else, the link, as soon as we're done. Um, the blog has been growing. I really appreciate that. Um, if you'd like to send a donation, which some people do, um, I, my Venmo handle is the symbol at, and then Matthew with a capital T M, and then there's two T's in Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, then a hyphen in the middle, not at the bottom, and capital L, a-U-T-E-N. The best way you can support me, though, is I've been a professional astrologer for over 20 years now. Um, I've been giving readings for over 20 years. If you or anyone else you know is looking for a reading, you know, drop me an email and we'll talk about how we can arrange that. And my email is M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at Gmail. Dot com. So one more time, that's M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. Natal chart reading is definitely necessary, you know, to start with. That's knowing your own birth chart because it's always with you. And, you know, if you've gotten other readings of it in the past and you still don't feel comfortable with it, you know, it's good to get a good reading 
become a professional astrologer to really understand that. And then um, every year I recommend a predictive reading. It's very similar to what I'm doing each week on this blog, except it's for you alone in your life. And every year different planets come in and affect your chart and will create different issues or situations in your life. So when you know that that's what's supposed to be going, it's much easier to find solutions to some of the you know, stress or tension or decisions that you may have to make in relation to stuff like that. Um, I recommend doing it around your birthday every year. You give it to yourself as a birthday present because it's well worth it. Um, relationship charts, if you know one need to want to examine a new relationship or an existing one and, and see you know what, you know what it's all about, the entity that's been created between you and another, you know that's something I do. Relocation, astrocartography, also if you're looking to move somewhere else, um, considering other places, we can always see how your chart is going to change and what what energies will be more prevalent there. Um, election charts, if you have an important event, you know, like marriage, starting a business, why not line up the energy as best you can in the, in the birth chart of that event, you know, and make it more possible for the energies of the universe to work well with you and harmoniously um, in the future. And that's what an election does. Um, horary questions, if you have some emotionally burning issue that you just can't seem to get the answer to, make a decision about, sometimes we can get an answer by doing a horary chart or some direction to tell you which way to go. Um, uh, fixed star readings are for people who are really looking into their deeper soul purpose and what, the, you know, what they're here for. And um, so, yeah, all kinds of different readings. I also have beginning, I have beginner's classes. There's five of them right now. They're available on Dropbox. Once again, um, email me at, for that information. It's $25 a class or 20 if you're a student. Um, and you can take it, you know, check them out. And, if, you know, if I have enough students and they want to keep going, I will add more classes. Also, if you have an event that you're looking for an astrologer, if you need a lecture or a question and answer session or um, mini readings at a public event, um, some kind of entertainment even involved with astrology, please, you know, get in touch with me. Um, M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. All right, thank you very much. Um, you know, let's look a week ahead. The relationship things that started the last couple weeks will continue to unfold this week and probably reach another apex point. Like I said, adjustments need to be made. But um, but yeah, and then that month in November, like I said, it's going to be a time, I think, where we're going to like assess the new reality that we're all in both personally and, and in society and start to rebuild our, our new forms and structures from there. So an exciting time. If you look about it, look at it that way with the right attitude. All right. I will see you all next week and we will be talking about that very, very potent new moon in lunar eclipse in Scorpio.